in modern machines, there are all different types of applications for bearings. And uh, in modern machines, we see usually a mixture of ball and roller bearings, whereas bearings that were used many, many years ago were more of the sleeve-type bearings or babbitted, babbitted materials, bronze materials, even cast iron. Cast iron and steel was not uncommon years ago. But uh, most of our focus in this industry uh, is the so-called ball bearing, roller bearing, taper roller bearing, and spherical bearing. And to give you a very quick rundown, there are all different types of ball bearings for different applications. Um, one of the more common ones that we see is a deep groove ball bearing. <coughs> that deep groove ball bearing, which is shown right here, the very first one, uh, would normally be used in um, hoist motors, you might see today, uh, uh, primarily uh, deep groove ball bearings. You might see on, uh, on our own equipment a front alignment bearing. Uh, uh, right where the, uh, the traditional um, packing gland would be on, on machines in that area to support the, the worm shaft. Um, the, the next type of bearing that would probably be common would be an angular contact bearing. This is very common in thrust bearings. Uh, the thrust bearings that, uh, that, are, that are used on, on many machines use this in, in what they call duplex, use two bearings. Um, we also see shielded bearings, which is a, a sort of a deep groove with, with uh, shields in them or, or covers in them, so uh, the lubricant stays inside. Um, we also see double row bearings used in thrust bearings. Very often, we will we'll, we'll replace a double row bearing, uh, I'm sorry, an angular contact bearing that are put in duplex and change them over to a, to a double row bearing. One of the reasons is, is that uh, if you don't put these duplex bearings in properly, you'll end up with thrusting. Uh, and I have some samples here that I can show you that. So but by taking some of the mystery out of it, we just use a double row bearing instead. So no matter how you put it in, it, it's going to work out. Another very common bearing on uh, two to one shivs and uh, heavy, very, very heavy duty applications would probably be a straight roller bearing. You, you might see this on um, counterweight shivs, car shivs. Uh, freight machines, what have you, would be that straight roller. Next style that, uh, that's very common is, is, once again, that taper roller bearing. This would be a cross-sectional view of the taper roller bearing right here. And uh, an another style would be a spherical bearing. This would show you a, a, uh, a spherical is very, very nice bearing. Uh, it's a very expensive bearing, but it allows you a certain amount of misalignment. It will align itself. Let me step over here and just give you a very quick rundown. The angular contact bearing is very, very common, very commonly used in uh, thrust bearings on a worm shaft. Now, when put in the proper way, you'll have no problem at all with it doing its job. The outside race is contained inside a housing. The inside race is mounted onto the shaft. And successfully, by putting the bearings in the proper way, all of your thrusting would be done right inside containing this bearing. Should you put the bearing in the wrong way, by just flipping it, you'll see that it allows movement in the bearing. And you may get a guy who'll say, hey, I put new bearings in, and it's still moving back and forth. It's only because they didn't put them in properly. So beware of the fact that these, these bearings should be put in a certain way. And before you put them in, it's good to just check them. Uh, again, as I mentioned, these double row bearings a very, very common bearing that we use, a Titan, only because uh, it sort of eliminates the, the guesswork in this. And uh, a little bit more expensive, but certainly gives you that, that added comfort level. Here's our famous tapered roller bearing. It's a two-piece bearing, which consists of an outside ring. And there's also a, uh, a cluster of rollers that are on a taper and another inside race. And the successful way of using this bearing is the fact that we, we drive the inside race into the outside race. And that's what we talk about preloading. Preloading is pushing this inside race so that the rollers will push into that taper. And it's been our experience that you probably can't simulate enough pressure to destroy these bearings. Uh, you can put a tremendous amount of preload, and that bearing will take it. But should there be a little bit of play in this bearing, just a little bit of play, a few thousandths, and it will wipe out. So it's better to be too tight 
than to be too loose. And very often, this is put in one section, and there'll be another one put in an opposite section on this side, and on a geared machine, gearless machine, any type of uh, area where there is a, a loaded situation, there's a very, very common bearing. They're very available. They're, they're relatively inexpensive for, for the job that they do. Another bearing that you might see uh, is what's known as a spherical roller bearing. Uh, they are one of very high efficiency. And also, you'll notice that we, we, it will still operate and allow this outside race to be a little bit misaligned and still operate properly. It's a very, very interesting uh, bearing. And uh, it's, been, it's been used quite a bit in, in all kinds of industrial applications. Again, it's, it's somewhat expensive, but uh, it certainly provides a, a, a great comfort level if you have a little bit of misalignment. We see a lot of these sometimes on gearless machines. Uh, usually, when you're using this type of bearing, you wouldn't be using two of these bearings together. You would have a bearing on one side like this, and most likely a taper roller bearing on the opposite side, because something has to give rigidity on one side and the other side allowed the other side a little bit of that misalignment I was speaking of.